So you probably heard that you should stay away from tripods with center columns because they, they make your images blurry, or as my buddy Glenn Samuel from Sniper Photography calls them, the blur maker. But just how bad is a center tripod? Well, today we're going to put our trust in science and we're going to find out right here in my garage. I mean, after all, I mean, this is garage science, right? And some of the best ideas in the world came right out of a garage. So let's get to it. So to answer the question of whether a center tripod is really that bad, I scoured YouTube looking for videos. And I'm an electrician by trade, and I was really looking for something that gave me some hard data, like a vibration analysis. And so I didn't see that. I saw a lot of image comparisons, and you can take a look at that. They're out there, people shooting images on a tripod with a center column, without a center column, and kind of pixel pieces on the images. But today what I want to do is I want to take a vibration sensor, a gyroscope, put on the tripod, put on the camera on the tripod, actually give you some wind at about 5 to 10 mile an hour to, to simulate what it would really be like in those conditions and, and answer the question, is that center column really that bad? Now, in, in hurricane winds, I mean, you're not out there taking pictures, but what I want to do is give real world data and hopefully answer the question of whether or not a center tripod is really that bad. So my hypothesis for this experiment is, is that a center column really isn't that bad when we're capturing images under normal conditions. And normal conditions, as I mentioned, maybe winds about 5 to 10 miles an hour. So I'm actually using a wind speed indicator to determine what the speed of the wind is so that I can make sure the test is, is fair. And we're going to do it with the center column, and then I'm going to completely remove the center column and do it without the center column. So the wind speed is about 8 miles an hour, and that's how we're going to test it. But that's not the most important part. The most important part is that I'm going to mount a wit motion gyroscope on top of the camera with this cold shoe mount. And the idea is to measure the three axis, the X, Y, and the Z axis. So the X and Y is basically the uh, pitch of the lens up and down and then side to side. And then whether the tripod is rolling or not, moving on the Z axis or spinning as the wind blows against the lens, or at least that's the, the test. Now, this should pick up any, any of that data and we should be able to see it. And what my intentions are is to record the peak levels of motion during the test. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll gather that data on both with the tripod center column and without it. I'm going to collect that data and then we're going to discuss it and I'll break it down. And we'll find out once and for all whether this is truly an issue or not. So I'm going to run six tests in total. The first one being the wind speed as I mentioned earlier. The second one is I'm going to drop a 15 pound weight in the vicinity of the tripod legs. Now it's a concrete floor. I expect some vibration but not a lot. In addition to that, what I'm going to do is the mirror up test. So basically, I'm going to fire the shutter, or excuse me, fire the mirror, and I'm going to monitor the vibration of the mirror coming up. And then we're going to monitor firing the shutter with the mirror up, and then firing the shutter without the mirror up to kind of see what kind of vibration we get as a bonus uh, on this tripod test. And then we're going to do a, a hand push of the shutter to kind of see what kind of vibration that we're going to get in that. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I'll do these tests on both with the center column and without it. Now, to remove the center column, I'm going to use on this Gitzo Series 2 tripod, you can completely remove your center column and basically replace it. So I'm not just going to put the center column down and tighten it down. I'm going to completely remove it. Anyway, let's get to it. So after I mount the gyroscope on top of the camera, we're going to monitor the results on the iPad. So as you can see, as I move the three axis of the gyroscope, I get all kinds of great data. And what that's giving me is the actual degrees per second that I'm moving this. Now, as I mount this on the tripod, I expect we're going to get some movement on this tripod with wind. I'm, I'm certain of that. But just how bad is it? That's the question. I'm ready to record the data and we're going to start the fan. So I'm just kind of looking for the peaks. And I'm really about 0.8 is my peak. So I'm going to record that and move on to the next test. All right, so I have my 15 pound weight in my improvised measuring device. I'm going to chalk off 24 inches here. And I'm just going to drop the weight right in between the two front legs at 24 inches. And then I'm going to monitor the results. Oh yeah, we've got about a 0.2 spike on that. 
So there's definitely vibration in the tripod for dropping a 15 pound weight. So I've attached my trusty cable release and I'm gonna fire the mirror up. Yep, and I got about a 0.1 spike. So I have the camera in bulb mode with the mirror up and I'm gonna fire the shutter. Now, that's gonna raise the mirror up and I've already recorded that data, but I'm gonna give that a second and then I'm gonna fire the shutter to see what the shutter vibration is. So, mirror up. And then I'm gonna fire the shutter. And that's it. I do notice that walking around on the floor does not introduce any vibration whatsoever into the tripod, which is a good thing. But I always say when you're out in the field and certainly you're standing on soft ground or maybe you've got some, some branches and twigs underneath your tripod legs, you can often be standing on those things and not really realize that that's pitching the tripod up and, and you get movement. And you think it might be your tripod, but in fact, it's your technique. All right, so I removed the mirror lockup. Now I'm just gonna fire the shutter. So this is gonna record the mirror coming up and the shutter firing at the same time. Essentially taking a photo. All right, so this last test, I'm gonna fire the shutter release with a push of the finger. I'm only gonna to touch the camera with one hand and I'm gonna be as gentle as I can to fire the shutter to see what kind of vibration that I'm gonna get. And as I thought, pretty significant. All right, that's it. On to the next round of tests with the center column completely removed. All right, the results are in. But before we get into that, just as a disclaimer, I wanna say that I did repeat each test three times to make sure that I had accurate results. So if you're on the edge of your seat and you just can't wait any longer, here it is. The, the wind did have an effect, a greater effect on the tripod with the center column. Now, that's not surprising, but some of you might be surprised that it really wasn't much. It was almost nothing. It was a difference of 0.2 degrees per second, or excuse me, 0.1 degrees per second. Almost nothing, really very small. Now this was, remember, at about eight mile an hour winds. So the higher the winds, the bigger the difference would be. That's at least, that's what I would expect. The other difference was the impact. So when I dropped the 15 pound weight, the impact was more significant, and that's not surprising at all. On the center tripod, it was a difference of 0.2 degrees per second. So, and eh, you know, marginal, but nonetheless, a difference. Uh, the bottom line is on the, uh, the mirror up test, they were both 0.1. Uh, so the mirror up does have an impact on the camera. There is vibration with mirror up. And uh, that's why I like the cable release, by the way. But anyway, um, the shutter fire with mirror up, both were zero. Now that's interesting. I was expecting some kind of pickup from the shutter, but when the shutter, basically with the mirror up, the shutter goes, there's the shutter fires, the, can I, the, the vibration sensor couldn't even detect that there was a different, or that there was anything there. So it was zero and that's really good. And I'll tell you, that is a, a, a main reason to use a cable release. If, if I learned anything, I tell you, I learned this. There's not much difference between the center column. With the cable release, there's no movement. So firing the shutter without the mirror up, there was movement on that. It was 0.1. It was small, but nonetheless, there's movement. Again, you know, good reason to use the cable release. Now, on firing the shutter release, with my finger as gently as I could. Now this is a subjective test because how do you really measure, you know, someone's hand on the camera with the tripod extension and without it? Very subjective, but nonetheless, on the tripod with the center column, I did get a, it was 0.5, pretty significant. And without the center column, I got a 0.4. And I repeated the test actually several times on this one to make sure that I had a good average. So I don't think there's much difference, but you could say that the tripod without the center column does give you, you, you take better images at least uh, handheld without the center column. And that, that's really, if you think about it, I mean, the center column is really throwing the tripod off axis. So I think you're gonna, you're gonna get more movement in it if you put your finger on the shutter release. So to answer the question of whether a center column introduces more blur into your images or not, well, the answer is it does. But really and truly, it's very insignificant. It's a very small amount, at least in this test in my garage. And we all know garage science, right? 
yeah. But uh, anyway, so what's the takeaway for me? It's this. I, I think I would stand by using my center column tripod, my travel tripod, as a travel tripod. It's lightweight. I'm not going to lug my Series 3 Gitzo uh, uh, on a two-mile hike. I'm going to stick with my, my Gitzo travel tripod, and, and I'm going to use that when I need to use it, but I think a good takeaway is when you can put the center column down, put the center column down. And when you can't, you need the height, leave it up. And don't be afraid to use it. I think that's the takeaway. The takeaway for me is I think center columns are, are okay choices. Probably the best quality tripod you can get will certainly help, but I wouldn't shy away from a center column. That's the takeaway for me anyway. I hope you found something useful in this video that you could take away and use. And uh, I really hope you like the lab coat. By the way, this is for Peter Fritz. Uh, and I'll leave a link to his channel at the end in the video description. But Peter, I wore this for you. I told you I was going to level up, so I wanted to make sure I was in full character here for this part. So anyway, but uh, yeah. If you did enjoy this video, you might enjoy a couple others that I have. I have one on essential landscape photography accessories that I can't live without. I think you might find that interesting. And then another one that's kind of uh, along the lines of tripods, but it's really talking about gear heads versus ball heads. And I'll leave a link to those in the video description. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video and consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you on the trail.